in the AutoZone studios, AutoZone. Get in the zone. Uh, congratulate our great country's Olympic team. I want to thank you all for your efforts. I want to thank you for your hard work. The whole country's pulling for you. And we're really proud of you. This flag serves as a symbol of this nation's strength, of our resolve, of our determination to fight for freedom. you all the best to congratulate you well, let's roll god bless it's kylie and booms on a monday and we're about to roll into a new week that the voice of president bush at the opening ceremonies uh, good and bad at the opening ceremonies visually a beautiful, beautiful event, and uh, we'll talk about the Olympics on the show. The NBA All-Star Game this weekend, ouch. All-Star Saturday night, ouch. Oh. The Pro Bowl, ouch. Oh. Not great. Big show for you today as uh, we have a lot of great guests. Uh, first of all, we'll have uh, Kevin Embrick from Montana State Northern University. Uh, if you missed the show last week, the end of the week, we got into it with uh, Miss Sarah Gogler, who was a player on his team. They have uh, mutinied. And they refused to play for him. We had on uh, Sarah, we had on her father. Drunk. Uh, her father uh, made some comments, I think. Um, he seemed to be drunk. a little out of sorts. I don't know if I'm going to say drunk. But we'll play all that for you today. We'll get pieces of that. We also yeah, we had, had Mr. The, uh, athletic director on, too, jumped on. Yeah, Friday was uh, amazing. If you missed any of that, we'll try and recap for you before the coach comes on. That was uh, for both of us, for Kev and I, we've not been a part of anything like that uh, in all the time of doing radio. It was amazing, and people have been talking about it all weekend, so we followed up for you and got the coach. And there's something very interesting he has to tell, so don't miss it. Well, Mr. Spikowski, the AD, was on, and uh, you'll hear from him, and you'll also hear uh, live from Kevin Embrick uh, later in the show. Uh, Tom Bradley from the Westminster Kennel Club. Of course, the dog show is tonight, so uh, we'll be doing that. We like to do that every year. And, uh, go Badlingtons. Go Badlingtons. Yeah, go right over the cliff. And the, uh, the expansion draft is coming up here in about a week. Charlie Casserly will be the beneficiary of the expansion draft in the NFL. He is the general manager of the Houston Texans, and he'll join us later in the show also. We'll talk about their philosophy and who might go where drew bledsoe might be out there somewhere for them and uh, some running backs and linebackers so we'll talk about all of that uh, but uh, kylie Mar Booms began marvin lewis he uh, only has to uh, pack up his car and go about 40 miles it seems well that's an interesting story and uh, that was a story that was unfolding on friday marvin lewis of course the defensive coordinator for the great Baltimore Raven defense, record-setting defense two years ago. This past year, finished second in the NFL. Uh, he was going to be the head coach in Tampa Bay. Rich McKay wanted him, and uh, all of a sudden, that was vetoed and overruled. And uh, then he was going to be the coordinator with the Ravens. He was going to stay. Evidently, uh, Daniel Snyder opened up his pocketbook to the tune of over a million dollars a year. And uh, now Marvin is the highest-paid assistant coach in the history of the National Football League, well, and that's we'll a great about story. That, one yeah. later. that is a great one. But I want to start with um, uh, the weekend, uh, the Olympics on Friday night opening ceremony. Um, visually spectacular. Uh, there was so many things that were, I mean, I, you know, this is going to come out wrong, but, I mean, Jim McKay. Jesus God. What do you I mean, mean come out? You say the guy's I, name, it's going to come out wrong? I, it's just, what are they doing? What, why are they doing it to this guy? He's barely alive. It was very difficult to watch. Jim McKay is a tri cherished oh, uh, icon best. of broadcasting. He, of course, uh, broadcast the Munich Olympics uh, with the I tragedy there. I thought they'd bring there. Bob Hope on next. Uh, the only the word that came to mind, and, and Jim, with all due respect, even if you could hear me, if you're a foot from the radio and actually hear what I'm saying here. Turned up to 10. The word that came to mind was cadaver when I was watching uh, 
when I was watching Jim. I, I felt like, I, I felt the same way. I, I felt, well, first of all, I thought, my God, poor Bob Costas. He's got Katie Couric and Jim McKay to deal with. And on top of that, he's got to do the show. And, and I'd Bob, rather be in prison in Kandahar than have Jim McKay on my right and Katie Couric on my left. Yeah, and it was really, a, it was a horrible I, I shouldn't, you know, I shouldn't do this because I'm not a TV executive. Probably never will be now. It was a horrible television presentation, a oh production presentation. Now the visuals, the the beauty of the scene yeah, was, the pageantry was off the scale, off yep. the scale. Salt Lake did that. That was great. The presentation, the television presentation of mm. that, and and I don't know what ever possessed them to put an 80 year old man out in 10 degrees. Let him sit there for a while and then ask him to speak. That, that to me, that's a formula for disaster, and it really was. Jim McKay was a blathering, gurgling fool. Feeble. <laughs> he was feeble. I, he thought he was in Innsbruck. Well, you know, I've spoken, I've done football games that have been 10 degrees. And he he was in, <laughs> I've done football games in 10 degrees at age 35 and couldn't speak. It was so cold, and they put this poor guy outside and Katie Couric uh, she looked like she wore her entire wardrobe she looked like she had 10 layers of clothing on and that absurd headband or whatever the, I, what the hell who the hell well, doesn't she have an advisor for 17 million dollars a year don't you have somebody to dress you has I there mean, ever you... been 17 million dollars a year more wasted than on that bro there are local women in a ton of markets that can do easily what she does, if not better. I don't well, know what's going on. People like her, and I like her. I mean, I think she's cute. I, the thing is, she's, here, she's being liberal. paid. She's being paid to be cute. She, but cute is not hard hitting. Cute. You know, I don't want to beat up Katie Kirk. Don't you Katie remember Kirk from the she election? Looks like she's ten years old. Yes, I do. The I election night, it looked like she bopped the entire staff. Now, explain what you're talking about. Well, she was so disheveled. Her hair. She had the fraternity look. Night, eh? She had the out the basement window of the fraternity house yeah. with Dawn look, yeah. She did have that look on her. And that's not to say she boffed anybody. That's not what we're saying. Well, I know. I'm just saying the look. And, and, and Jim McKay, Jim McKay didn't know when you were talking to him. I, I, and when he did speak. Well, he kept butting in. I didn't know what he was saying. He kept butting in. And you put it, Bob Costas in the awkward position of saying, you know, Jim. If you can hear me, shut up. I mean, you know, it, it, I, I, I could not believe it. The best part of Friday night is definitely Sasha Cohen handing the phone to Bush saying, say hi to my mother. I thought that was as great a moment as I'd ever seen. And they did capture that. So that was neat. You thought that was as great a moment yeah, as you've I ever seen. Yeah, I loved it. I, a I girl just handing the phone to yeah, the Yeah, here, person. talk to my parents. <laughs> he did. I, that was neat. It I wasn't was as good. great a moment as I've ever seen. It was neat. Well, you know, and then had, the World Trade Center. She had the Center. presence of mind to say, you know. Well, the World know, Trade Center America. flag came in, and everybody's commenting, and Jim McKay says whoa, something whoa, to whoa, the whoa. effect of, yeah. I remember young Claude Keeley when he was sperm. <laughs> <laughs> You're an evil bastard. I'll tell you. Look. <laughs> Look. I don't want to look. He needs to be in a climate-controlled place. I mean, is that you don't take an 80-year-old man. I, did, and I, haven't seen, I haven't seen him since. He, 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 he needs to be... Strap him to a luge and send him down the hill. No, God, don't do that. Oh, he can't point his toes anymore. That would be... A, or hold his head up, for that matter. He wouldn't uh, do well on a luge. That was look, unfair. Jim McKay... Hey, you know what's wrong with this? And you know, we'll, get, we'll get just fricasseed for saying this. Well, for, I, saying, for saying all of this. For but saying I'll tell you what's, everybody in the country thought yeah, when they were watching. But, but I will tell you what's wrong with this. Some jackass <laughs> administrator executive... That's right. ...goes out and hires Jim McKay on loan, you think you think they could lend them fast enough? Yeah. <laughs> you think over at ABC they're not sitting there going? Yeah, oh, yeah there was a guy with his palm covering different. the phone, going, "It's NBC. They want McKay. <laughs> yeah. They want to borrow him. He's in a rest home." Yeah. Well, he, uh... <laughs> I can't. damn it. You know, this is the biggest sporting event on the planet. You would think that some jackass at the at the top of NBC, and the name Ebersol comes to mind here, 
I guess I won't be looking for a job over there in the near future. But but here's I the like deal. Dick too. I don't know. Yeah, we all love Dick. Yeah, the XFL. <laughs> Jim McKay. Yeah, he's having a banner year. Yeah. So yeah. So, so they put McKay. That they hire McKay. You would think you would check his pulse before you would hire the guy. I mean, you. Th you put I to I raced home from the damn radio show. I turned the thing on, uh, and there and there were these two. There was a, there was Costas, who I I respect unbelievably, the fabulous broadcaster. There's Katie Kirk again, uh, you know, which uh, I just don't want to see. Right, I'm and, tired and, of her. And, well, I want to see her on Sesame Street. I don't want to see her in this this incredibly moving world. And they have strange people at different venues. They have Robert Hager. This is a guy, for people who don't know, on NBC News, does nothing but airline disasters. Mm -hmm. That's what he covers, so airline crashes. Case. Maybe they had him there yeah, just Now he's case. at the bobsled or something. Yeah. And once I saw McKay, I thought, you know, I thought, sure, they'd go to figure skating and they'd have Kirk Douglas gargling his tongue. <laughs> Douglas. Look, look. I'm putting this. I'm putting this. I'm going to lay this in the lap of the person uh, that, right. that it belongs. Somebody, Whoever somebody. the executive, and I'll tell you, the producer. They stick the producer with this group of people, and they say, "Okay, make a make show, it, make it happen." And you know what? They they just couldn't. They needed to shut up all of them, and just let the thing happen. But Jim felt compelled to talk. Whenever he, whenever he recovered consciousness, breath. well, it seemed like he faded in and faded out, and, and I honestly he couldn't did. tell what he was saying. Well, I, again, I, it's a hard thing to discuss on the radio. And it's kind of mean. It's kind of mean, but well, but you know look, what? They you know, a it's, of... a it's very tough on us. Let's face it. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a viewer and a big fan of Jim McKay's. I don't want to see him like that. That's right. This is the Muhammad Ali tribute again. Yeah, it is. They should add him up there, for God's sakes. Instead of they, Katie. Instead, they wheeled him out at the All-Star <laughs> game. How about the people they had singing the anthem at that thing? We'll get to that. Well, Muhammad would have looked better in Katie's outfit than she did. Kylie and Booms will be back.